all right so i have found a very cool effect and i want to share it with you all of course it's built with gsap this is the website that i have gotten the inspiration from as you can see it's pretty simple at first look but there are some elements on the website that makes it more interesting so one of the these elements is this section where you can see there is a lines follow the cursor of the mouse as it moves on the section on the respective section and I think it makes it so super interesting and it kind of keeps you engaged with the content in a way, subtle way. So it's powerful, but also quite elegant. What am I doing with my hands? Ha! Jazz hands. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. All right, so I'm starting with an absolute white or blank Canva. I'm just going to drop in a container and I will set this container let's go to structure set this container to be full width and i will give it a height of 100 vh you can give whatever height you want it all depends on your structure okay i will eliminate any gaps and for now that is it but we will come back here because we need to change the layout but that will i want to show you the mistake you might be making and why it's not working and what you have to change all right so in this container i will drop another container and before you say that i am adding too many containers on the page um newsflash uh, sometimes you have to do this in order to achieve a design that you want so there's nothing you can do sometimes and it's like imperative to make a certain design you need to add containers that's the way that elementor works we're trying to minimize the amount, but hmm, sometimes it's impossible. All right, I will give this container a, ah, let's set the, the width first to 75. Um, I will give this a height of 65. And make sure that the content is uh, uh, justified center and center. And also go to the main container and make sure that uh, the content in the container itself is justified center align item center and center so it's super centered <laughs> all right so the page is 65 okay i mean this doesn't really necessarily matter but let's go with it all right so i will set the padding for this container to be 30 and i will also style it to have a border of um one pixel and, and the border color to be a grayish color and i will also give it a border radius of let's say six honestly at this point it doesn't really matter i'm just doing this because this might be an interesting design or component itself and i need to demonstrate how the the thing, the component, the actual element works. All right, so what I will do, I will duplicate this container, duplicate, yes, and I will copy it, oops, no, I will copy it and paste it in here because dragging it, it doesn't really work. All right let's set it to be with a hundred percent of the parent container and also publish it at this point we are not going to be seeing anything go in this container in the second container and i'm gonna drop some code here this is not the gsap code this is css in order to style this container and you will see all right so i will drop the con the the CSS in here and nothing is happening at this point because we need to add our uh, classes so we have to classes Navi and Conti obviously as always you can change this anytime you want with whatever you want just make sure that they are uh, represented here so sorry about this but um, this needs to be a little bit indented so you can see what uh, is happening here. Um, let me go up. 
All right, so this is Navi and this is Conti. This is the effect that takes place on hover and this is the effect that you see and you don't see on the page right now, but it's basically a background filter blur. So it makes the page, uh, the, the background of the component of the container blurred to six pixels. And we have also background color that we can change anytime with whatever we want. And you could say one and it's pretty white. So I will leave it at 9.09 .09. and it's less white. It doesn't really show probably in the video, but it's a little bit uh, opaque. Again, the background color, you can change it with whatever color you want. Now we have the background color for the hover. So this color, again, you can change and this is, oh, I made a mistake. Um, we have to change the class here to cont, not conti. Okay, so as you can see, this is what is happening once you hover over the um, container. So this is the color that you see here, the color of the background that you can change, as I said. And then we have the box shadow that you can change the color of as well. And you can see it's that indigo color kind of purplish. And then we also have a filter here. This is not ne really necessary. You could delete it. Also, we have a border radius on hover that changes. You could say, oh, I don't know, something dramatic 50 and you can see the border shapes. <laughs> uh, but I will turn this off as well as the border values because we already set them in our um, Elementor natively. Whew. Okay, I would say that this is kind of a bonus. I had to put this as a design on the page in order for this effect to kind of look like uh, the, the example that I showed you in the beginning of this video. So um, what I will do now, I will, as always, add an HTML tag in here widget and I'm going to be drop my code. All right. So the code is a little bit messy. I need to clean it up. Let me go a little bit to the code. And as you can see, we have an ID here that we need to add to our main container. So let me go to the main container and drop it in CSS ID here. So let's publish. Let's reload. All right, so here we are at the problem. As you can see, our, whatever you call these lines, um, kind of are stacking on top of each other. So the content goes on and on and on uh, as for as long as we have <laughs> our lines for. Um, so what we need to do, this was the mistake or kind of the, the, the issue that would arise, which you would have to troubleshoot. So go to the main container and make sure that the direction is turned to horizontal. Let's do that. And the elements are already in horizontal position. And now we also have to make sure that the, the wrapping is set to wrap. And as you can see, they are wrapped. Also align the content to center. And uh, our con uh, child container needs to be turned to position absolute. Let's publish and let's have a look. So this is how it looks. <laughs> it looks a little bit funny. What we need to do is let me go and turn the Z index to three and publish again. And as you can see, you can see the lines moving. This is pretty cool. And also we have a little bit of overflow and the page kind of jumps, kind of shifts, and that is not very nice. So of course, what you can do uh, is go to additional options, go to overflow and turn this to hidden. And now 
the problem is solved. Also, if you want the um, container, the child container to sit in the center, just remove the zeros. Okay, so there you go. This is the component. And I think it's pretty cool. And of course you can introduce this on a section of the page and have a little bit of a message as you have seen on the website uh, that I have shown as an example and make it interesting and also elegant. I think it's an elegant um, effect. So basically this is how it would look. And I think it's uh, quite attractive. All right, let's go a little bit to the code and let's get into it a little bit. As you can see, we have a little bit of the style here. Obviously, you could uh, move this style to the advance and go to custom CSS and drop it in here. But since it's just a little bit of um, style, I would leave it here so you have everything in one go. Um, if we increase this, as you can see, the space between our lines grows. So if you want less, Space, I would say go um, as low as it looks good. I don't know what to say. Let's see how it looks. This is quite low. So you would need to adjust a few things uh, in here to make it look good. Um, let me see again. Yeah. All right. So I played a lot of a uh, lot with this um values to make it look good and to work and i think i managed to do that so arrows this ad adds arrows so if we say a thousand let's publish and let's have a look and we have an, a, a lot of arrows but these arrows also give um quite a lot of space let's have a look yeah so basically uh make sure that you or if it doesn't bother you make sure that you add another maybe five um one two let's see if that works and uh, we are at 360 and if i add four is it going to add two and two each side it did actually add two and two so that is the perfect number to achieve this effect the perfect number to have it all match on the page in terms in terms of amount of um, lines okay so so as you can see the svg that is being created here is the are the actual lines so the fill is this color but if i change it to ff F there and here and here where else I think that's it let's publish let's have a look so. hmm so think I need another F here, another F here, and another F here. I think there's six Fs. Yeah, six Fs. So that's where you change the color of the lines, if you want to change the color of the lines. So in my case, I changed it to white, uh, but you can change it with whatever color you want. So you can also play also with the stroke width. So how thick these are. Let's go to nine. And let's have another look. As you can see, they are a little bit thicker. So again, as I said, play with all these values in here, uh, in the values of the SVG and see what works for you and how you can customize this to look good for your project.
like to see what else you can build with Elementor, watch this playlist here or here. And if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video and I'll see you next time.